Okay, when your machine arrives, your guides are going to be off the feeder. You're going to need to install them. It's this hole and this hole, and they go here on the sides. Just put your screw through there, line it up, and screw them on nice and tight. Careful you don't strip them out. Okay, after you get both your guides installed, put it by your base and down inside of this hole. There's your cable. The cable connects to the base. I'm going to put it on here. Just kind of line it up and just turn it nice and easy until it snaps in like that. And then turn your screw down and lock it up. Now you want to slide your feeder in. You want to line up this pin with this slot and this pin with this slot. You're going to have to pick it up, line them up, and then just drop it down. At that point, your feeder's hooked up, you're ready to go. You can take some of your material, whatever you're going to be using, envelopes, full-size sheets, whatever you're using. Take two pieces of your media, and just slide it down inside of here, and unlock your arm. This will slide down, and lock it in place, and pull your media out. At that point, I'm going to put on your elevator guide. There's a pin here. Pulls back like that. You line them on here. Pull the pin back. Slide it down until it goes in one of the holes. Bring this part around. You got this pin that slides through here. There's a hole here, here. Comes out the other side here. You want to set this in between. Line up the holes, and slide your pin through there, all the way through so it locks. Then you can take your media that you had again, you want to put it down inside so that it hits the separator tips, and then that's where you want to place your elevator. The elevator just goes on here, it's got two clips on the bottom, and they just slide into these grooves. Put the one down and lock it in there. Then you can push your guides over. You don't want these too tight or it's going to bind your material. You just want them a little bit of gap on each side. At that point you can go ahead and plug your machine in. Plugs in on the side over here. And of course your communication cable which should be hooked up to LP21. Here. It's alright, I'm sure they can figure that out. Hook it up in there. Okay. So yeah, turn your power on, your power switch is over here underneath the cable. At this point, print will come on. It'll go through two phases. Going into the second phase. When that's done, it'll come up and your online light should come on. At that point, you're ready to send information to print. Okay, at this stage, since you're ready to print, on the side here, you'll, you have a knob. This is just the thickness of your media. The smaller is the thinner piece, and depending on how thick your piece is, you can adjust this and the heads will rise to whatever thickness that you need to print your media. This is a thin piece so I'm going to keep it fairly low. 
Also inside of here, these four set of infeed wheels, according to how thick your piece is, or how much pressure you need on it to drive it. By pulling this pin out, you can adjust the amount of tension on your media piece to help drive it into the machine. Also on the other end of the machine, you have these exit wheels that will help bring your piece out of the machine. These are movable. They can move pretty much wherever you want. So you want to align them so that this, these wheels are not on top of your print. Wherever you need to move them, they'll work fine. As long as they're not on your print and they don't mark your piece. A lot of, people, a lot of times that will mark your piece. Okay, at this point we're going to add some media to the feeder. You want to take most of your media and kind of fan them out, break them a little bit, make sure they're not sticking together, and then you want to just kind of spread them out a little bit, kind of wedge them, get them down inside of there, and push them up. Okay, at this point we're going to do a purge. Right now your machine is online, you want to hit the button, take it offline, and you want to hit menu, and then you can either go plus or minus, in this case I'm going to go minus and go to where it says purge print head. Hit enter. It says purge print head, yes or no. Hit the plus or the minus. I'm going to do a purge, so I'm going to hit yes. Should take one piece of media and send it through. Now, of course, at this point, it looks like we have a couple of cartridges that need to be wiped. But uh, you can take, if you want to move, that'll show you where your bank A and bank B is located on your media. If you want bank A to move over to the left, you can just unlock it here. You can slide this wherever you want to put it that's on your media. Same thing with bank B. Bank B can be moved to pretty much anywhere on the piece you would like it to fall. fall. These cutouts actually try to represent your inch and a half of print. So you can kind of try to line those cutouts up. Uh, at this point, since our purge was kind of messed up from our cartridges being dirty, I'm going to clean the cartridges. By doing that, I got a, a regular paper towel, I dye water, spray it on there, make it moist, unlock your cartridges, slide each one out, just put it on there, and just pull it. Just want to wipe them a couple times, keep that ink flowing. Make sure all the clips are down. And come back to here again. So in the same mode. I'm going to do a purge again. Looks like the one still needs another wipe. Looks like it's this one. This is bank B, the first one. It's this one. Let's wipe it again. Back in. When you're putting it back in, make sure it's you don't have to force the clip down. A lot of people will push it straight back and then try to close it, and it's hard to close. Just let it kind of sit in there. The clip will actually take it back into position. So if you feel much pressure, see how it kind of popped out there a little bit? So if you feel much pressure when you're going to push it back in, don't, don't force it. it. It'll crack, and that'll be a problem. That's what your purge should look like. Okay, a few tips for setting up the 30K. 
sometimes I think we had stated before you can you want to set it to one thickness I mean two th thicknesses of a sheet if um you find they're getting too close together and you're getting it's skipping meaning it prints one and then skips one and then prints one you mainly only want to set the separators to one sheet of paper so just put one in there let it let that drop down and lock it in some other fun adjustments you can do is to change where you have the metal stop here little elevator you can make it so it's just barely picking up the pile something like that also you can change the height and the angle of this elevator you may find that some pieces run better up higher like so some big pieces you might find run better flat like so you also have a for really big pieces or longer pieces you have an extra thing here to help lift up the back so if you put that like that then lock it in A lot of times if you're going to use it like that, you're going to take this off. This will be holding up the back of the pile. You can also use it like that for some odd, some of the odder pieces you might need to run. Most of the time it's just going to be kind of folded up here. Alright, cleaning 30K. Your paper sensor is right down in there. There's a the top half, the bottom half is down in that hole. Just take some compressed air, preferably something without any dust or um, moisture in it. We do sell the clean jet, we also sell our own branded um, air that's safe to use on electrical sensors and won't blow dust or any kind of moisture into the sensor. The feeder has its own sensor which is a little harder to get to and see. See the hole down in there? That's the bottom portion. That's where you're going to have to spray some air down in there. And there's a top portion up in this here but you shouldn't have to mess with that one. Your 30K on this one has got a newer separation assembly. After it's been running for a long time, it might flatten out on the bottom of these rollers. All you need to do is slide this over, turn it to the next num number, and slide it back. That should put it to another nice round section. I'm just going to put it back for right now. On the 30K also, it's made so these are end user replaceable. You're going to take your elevator guide off, four screws on either side here. That whole plate will pull off. Down inside there's a, a belt on this side, but on the bottom on this edge there's a lever. That will take some of the pressure off of the, the drive belt. You slide the drive belt off. And these assemblies will actually pull out of here. These tires peel off. You can find the tires on suppliesformailers.com. Also, these feed belts. It's not too often you have to replace these, though. The only other thing you might want to do on occasion is make sure there's no ink building up inside here. Put the head up. Clean the ink off the platen. You can wipe the belts down. Just be careful when you're doing it, especially if you're doing it on this end. Don't get your rag or your fingers caught down inside here. And just wipe that off and get the ink off the belt. 
Uh, one last tip, if you have a really glossy piece that you're running and it's the dress is slipping up and down the piece, you can loosen this up all the way oh, and take these and slide them in. Slide them closer together. Then take the outside ones and actually slide them so they're all grouped together so you have more tires pressing down on your piece. They are movable. Just loosen these and you can slide them back and forth. Biggest problems we run into is things running over top of the address and smudging the address. This tries to show you where you're printing and this tries to show you where you're printing. If the sleds on the bottom of this is running over your, your address these sleds it's going to smudge. You may find if you only need to print the um, address you may find you only need one head assembly you could just move the one out of the way. Make sure you don't kink these cables either. You don't want them to get a crimp in them or anything like that. The next most common problem, like right now, if you look here, the edge of this looks like it's lined up with the edge of that roller. This should be your first line right in here. Well that exit roller is actually going to run right over top of it. So you want to slide that up a little bit and maybe slide this one closer. And make sure they're not in the print path. And that's about all you'll need to do. The rollers, before every job, it's best to take some um, roller cleaner. Again, we sell a rubber cleaner rejuvenator that will actually put the, some of the oils back into the rubber so it doesn't dry out. Best thing to do is either use, just use the test button, take the machine offline, hit the test, let it feed, and take a cloth with the rubber cleaner rejuvenator and wipe it on the tires. Before every job, or even better would be to, at the end of every job, but to, to put that rubber cleaner rejuvenator on the tires and let it soak in overnight. 